Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I was just about ready to test this what's being sold as E85 fuel and I want to make sure exactly what the content of ethanol is in it. Now the reason that that's important is depending on the month of the year what's being sold as E85 can have anywhere between 65% ethanol all the way up to 85%. Now that's a big difference so I'm going to test it to make sure I know exactly what ethanol's in my fuel. The first thing you need to be able to test your own ethanol is one of these test kits. And this I got from Summit Racing, but you can get it from Jags or Amazon. I'll put a sheet up here as to the one I'd get if I was going to buy one today. The next thing you're going to need is a clean funnel and just a little bit of clean tap water. And one more thing you need is a clean glass jar. You don't want to use plastic or anything because I'm going to use this to hold the 85 and it can attack certain plastics. Step one is to open up the cap. And it's got a very specific line here that you need to fill to water. There. Now you can't probably see it perfectly, but I guarantee you it's right on that line. The next step is to get our 85. So I'm just going to shake it up a little bit because the ethanol and gasoline can separate. And of course you want to have a representative sample of what's really in your jug. I'm going to pour a little bit of 85 into the glass jar. Then I'm going to pour the 85 into the tester right up to the top line here. Perfect. All right, so as you can see, I've got the 85 filled right up here to this top line. The kit you get might have a little bit different line, so obviously read your instructions carefully, but the ones I've looked at are all almost identical. The next step here is to shake it up really good. Okay, it's been about a minute. It's settled out nicely, and as you can see, I bought the wrong test kit because this only tests really close on each end, but the one I showed you is better. It's got it marked all the way up and down. So anyway, as you can see, this is clearly about E60. Uh, a far cry different than the 85 that's advertised and that's normal to be expected because this is April, May in Minnesota and they're probably getting close to switching from winter blend to the summer blend. So now that you know how to test for the ethanol content in your fuel, the next question is when and why would you want to do so? The reason comes down to the simple fact that gasoline and ethanol are two completely different fuels. For example, Gasoline at wide open throttle likes an air fuel ratio of about 12 and a half to 1. 100% ethanol on the other hand at wide open throttle requires an air fuel ratio of about 7 to 1. A massive difference between these two fuels. For the average grocery getter, there's no need to do any testing. Manufacturers simply give you a super conservative tune and your engine will run just fine on gasoline whether it contains 0% ethanol or 10% ethanol. Now, for the true performance enthusiast, unless your setup is flex fuel capable, in order to get the most power out of your engine, you really should have it tuned for the percentage of ethanol in the fuel that you intend to run, and then regularly test your fuel to make sure you're giving your engine the fuel that it was tuned for. Now, if you're running 91 or 92 octane pump gas, many people just split the difference between 0% ethanol and 10% ethanol in this fuel, and set up the tune to assume that it has 5% ethanol. Now you can do this, but just know that you're leaving a little bit of horsepower on the table. And if you were to have your tune set up for the exact ethanol composition of your fuel, there's a little bit of horsepower to be gained. Now, if you run a higher ethanol content fuel, such as E85, in a performance car without flex fuel capability, as I just showed you, my 85 test results came out at an ethanol content of 60%. So you absolutely need to test your fuel. There is no safe way to split the difference with a one-size-fits-all tune when you're running higher ethanol content fuels. Failing to test the fuel for your high-performance forced induction engine can lead to overly rich or lean fuel ratios, uh, too much ignition timing for what the engine can handle with that fuel and ultimately could lead to the death of your engine. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe. And now, get out to that garage.